today me and my friend Matt we aren't really fans of it uh, but we do enjoy watching Nicolas Cage films my personal favorite uh, National Treasure uh, I'm a fan of Con Air uh, another one of my movies like even though it doesn't have Nicolas Cage Air Bud's seventh inning fetch it's a Valentine's Day tradition I've watched it for the last 15 years uh, even though it only movie. came out in 2006 good film um, it's it's one it's a timeless classic it's a landmark in American cinema um, we also enjoy quoting Nicolas Cage films at any time possible just you know, throw them in anywhere we can. But, not the bees. Uh, not the bees, yeah. But anyway, that's pretty much it we do for Valentine's Day. Yep, Nicholas Cage. Uh, watch Con Air. What? Yeah, Con Air, it's an eye-opening movie. Yes, uh, uh, if you want to learn how to treat your lady, yeah. watch Con Air. This Valentine's Day, I plan on calling up China Walk, getting a huge order of tofu and broccoli and going to town on Netflix TV series. Um, Parks and Rec, always a good one. Well, um, this year we're going to go to Alpha Phi Delta's Valentine's Day Ball on Saturday. So. Really fun. I went last year. <laughs> Lindsay, stop. Um, I went last year. And um, there's dinner, dancing, and then it's just a good time to raise money for... Music is for um, Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, there's like lovey movies. Um, I mean, I'm always down for like a romantic comedy. So. Walk to Remember, oh um, <laughs> Nicholas Sparks, all those movies. <laughs> the Notebook. Yeah, The Notebook. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, okay. I just saw Frozen last week, and it is super cute. <laughs> so, I mean, it's adorable. Um, so that's a good one. Definitely movie and dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be fun. Me and my boyfriend, he has special stuff planned for Valentine's Day. I'm not sure what it is because he won't tell me. But I don't think it has anything to do with books or movies what? or music. But I'm not sure what I'm looking forward to finding out. For Valentine's Day, I never really do anything. So, yeah, I just sit in my room by myself. It's all good. This year's different since I have a boyfriend. And he's cool beans. But... Um, I got him a gourmet gift basket off of Groupon. Groupon's awesome. But it has different beers from around the world and it has like popcorn stuff in it. So that's cool. I don't really listen to certain music on Valentine's Day, but I'm listening to Tracy Chapman lately. Because I saw a video about her a couple days ago and it seemed really cool, chill music. Um, mm, TV. I need to catch up on Dexter. I really need to do that. I haven't watched it since like the fourth or fifth season and I heard it's going crazy so I need to find out what's happening. Welcome to Previews and Reviews. I'm Amanda Duchek and this is our Valentine's Day special. But if, you're, but if it's not your favorite holiday, don't worry, we will have something for you too. This special will focus on all kinds of love from romantic to friendship and to family. Also during this episode, You'll get to hear Duquesne students' favorite Valentine's themed movies, games, shows, and music. But starting out, there's a new comedy about love and friendship, The Awkward Moments, starring Zac Efron, Miles Teller, and Michael B. Jordan. This movie is about three guys who all agree to stay single for their newly divorced friend. However, as you can imagine, that doesn't stay true for long. I recently saw this movie and would recommend it to anyone who wants a good laugh with their friends. It had humor, sweet moments, and is great for the college generation. The Awkward Moment is currently in theaters if you want to check it out. Another recently released movie that would be fun to see this Valentine's Day with your friends is Ride Along. Although this movie's main theme is not about love, it is about respect and the extremes some people will go to 
prove their love for someone or to protect someone from a broken heart. This film stars Ice Cube and Kevin Hart, and it's about a brother taking his sister's soon-to-be husband on a test of endurance. Ice Cube's character is a detective who wants to ensure the man his sister is marrying is worthy of her love, so he takes him on a ride-along while he's on duty. This movie has rude and comedic humor, along with action that will be sure to keep you entertained for this holiday. Ride Along is playing in theaters now. The last movie I want to talk about that deals with love and friendship this Valentine's Day is Clueless. This 1995 movie stars Elisa Silverstone as a rich and popular high school girl playing matchmaker, giving makeovers, and looking for the perfect boyfriend. This film showcased some famous actors during the movie, including Brittany Murphy, Paul Rudd, and Donald Faison. This movie only took 40 days to film, which is crazy to think about because it's usually an average of 60 to 90 days to record a movie. So whether or not you have seen Clueless, here are some facts you might find interesting. Sarah Michelle Gillar was originally supposed to play the lead Cher, but because of scheduling conflicts with the soap opera All My Children, she had to back out. Which I think is funny because only a few years later she made her biggest acting debut as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Also, throughout this movie, there were 53 different plaid outfits worn by the characters. Needless to say, I think this movie really pushed the plaid pattern to extremes. Finally, I think Clueless was one of the first movies that started to introduce slang to the teenage generation, using phrases as like, whatever, and as if, made it popular for teens to use when speaking. Now moving on to some sweet and romantic love movies for you true lovers at heart. Crazy Stupid Love shows what happens after you get married and have children? This movie stars Steve Carell, Julianne Moore, Ryan Gosling, and Emma Stone. After a middle-aged man finds himself newly divorced, he gets help from a new friend to re-enter the single world. The movie gives audiences a realistic approach to life after falling in love and getting married. It shows the idea of what love is from the perspectives of a young boy, a high school girl, late 20-year-olds, and a middle-aged couple. Emma Stone said in an interview that she hopes the audience enjoys themselves for a couple of hours because that's one of the best things that movies can do. There are so many gray areas to love. You look at these circumstances that, on paper, look like you could just figure them out right away. And then you realize that everything is individual and you can't really make rules in love because it's such a crazy thing. Moving on to P.S. I Love You. This is for the mushy romantic viewers who want to see that true love exists even beyond death. This movie starred Gerald Butler and Hilary Swank. It is about a young woman grieving the death of her husband that also was her best friend. However, she soon starts receiving letters he wrote to her to help her through the grieving process. She finds herself on an amazing journey in her life and maybe even to new love. I like this movie because it shows that love exists everywhere and it's okay to learn to love again. Finally, I want to end with a very simple and classic Valentine's Day special, Be My Valentine, Charlie Brown. This TV short movie has Charlie Brown wishing for a Valentine from someone special this year. I think this TV movie really shows the message of just wanting to be loved by someone and how frustrating love can be at times. But I love how Charlie Brown is hopeful by the end of the movie to still talk about the many Valentines he hopes to get in the years to come. And as always, Snoopy is one of my favorite characters as he tries to play Cupid for Charlie Brown in his fun adventures with his friend Woodstock. Well, that's all for the movies portion of previews and reviews. I wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day, whether it's with your significant other, friends, or family. Just be sure to eat lots of sweets and enjoy yourself. I'll send you over to Sarah Wheeler to talk about video games and TV shows that will keep you entertained during this season of love. Thank you, Amanda. Of course, there are movies out there with love in the air, but what about in TV shows? Well, there may not be the kissy-kissy, goo-goo aspects that can be seen in The Notebook and A Walk to Remember, there are other types of romances that can be seen. Scrubs, for example, shows that friends can have a strong bond that can feel like romance, or in this case, a bromance. In Scrubs, two friends, Turk and JD, have a strong friendship that is similar to a romance, but without the typical lovey-dovey romantic, romantic love in traditional relationships. This friendship relationship between the two male friends is called a bromance. Bromances may not be a typical type of romance that we can see in classic love stories, but this bond between friends can feel like a romance. Friends can share a strong bond without the ties of being in a relationship with each other. Speaking of relationships, what better example of a somewhat perfect relationship is the story of Lily and Marshall from How I Met Your Mother. 
starring Neil Patrick Harris, Jason Siegel, Allison Hannigan, and many others. How I Met Your Mother is a story of love, friendship, and how Ted Mosby met his future wife. The show couple, Lily and Marshall, are the epitome of love at first sight. First meeting in the freshman dorm, Lily needs help getting her radio to work. She ventures down the hall in search for someone to help her. She doesn't know why, but she is drawn to a room out of the way in a corner. She knocks on the door and Marshall answers it. It was love at first sight and they have been inseparable ever since. Married on season two, they have been the closest to a perfect couple. Well, at least in the TV world. On the other side of the spectrum, there is one character from the show who doesn't follow the traditional laws of love or dating for all that matter. This, of course, is Barney Stinson, with his attitude of everything being legend, wait for it, dairy. Barney would rather have a one-night stand than settle down with one woman for the rest of his days. Let's just hope he doesn't end up like poor Robin this Valentine's Day. While video games may not have the traditional relationships, there is a sense of love and dedication. From over mountains and through dangerous castles, there are heroes willing to risk it all to save their princess. From the Mushroom Kingdom comes the story of Mario and Princess Peach. Making her first appearance in Super Mario Brothers, created in 1985, Princess Peach is kidnapped by Bowser. Throughout the game, Mario is told that the princess is in another castle than her previous one. After going through many more castles and defeating an army of monsters, he finally finds Princess Peach and saves her and the Mushroom Kingdom. This game shows that love will prevail even if it will take you through multiple castles in order to find it. Speaking of rescuing princesses, another series that has our hero going on an adventure in order to rescue their princess is the Legend of Zelda series. The hero in this series, Link, ventures into mountains, under lakes, and across deserts in order to gather up the power to defeat Ganon and rescue Princess Zelda. Throughout the years and many games in the series, many different storylines and adventures take place, but the majority of them have Link fighting his way through the evils of Hyrule so that he may rescue Princess Zelda and restore peace and balance to the kingdom. Well, that's all for me. Let me now send you off to Claire so that she may guide you into the world of music of the Valentine's Day variety. I'm Sarah Wheeler, and as always, you stay classy. Hey there, it's me again, Claire Mahollins, your music guru for pre previews and reviews. There are millions of love songs out there, especially this time of year, but whatever your relationship status is this Valentine's Day, I have the song for you. My first love song is Love Song by The Cure, a classic song about obsessive and undying affection. The Cure are an English rock band from the 1980s. The band has experienced many lineup changes, but lead singer Robert Smith has always been the lead member and songwriter. The band has a goth rock, post-punk alternative style. Their most famous song is of course, Love Song. Robert Smith wrote this song for his wife, Mary Poole, as a wedding gift. It is a beautiful song that expresses an undying love in a melancholic, extremely emotional way. This is the perfect song to play on a boombox outside the dorm of your true love. They will never forget your bold confession of love, or they will get a restraining order, either way. My next song is Love Street by The Doors. The Doors are a classic rock staple for your playlist. Lead singer and songwriter Jim Morrison is not only famous for his crazy drunk and drug-fueled antics, but his poetic lyrics and beautiful voice. Love Street is also a song written for his wife, but the meaning is not as wholehearted, despite the beautiful lyrics. The song is written about the apartment he and his wife Pam shared. The lyric suggests that this love was mostly one-sided. She loves him more than he loves her. If you think your boo doesn't love you as much as you love them, this song will help you understand your situation a little better. Now, let's be honest. Valentine's is not everyone's favorite day. Not everyone is lucky enough to be in a perfect relationship, or even a relationship for that matter. 
my next two songs are for all you out there that are dreading this season of candy hearts and roses. The next song I will be talking about is called I Hate Love by Garbage. Garbage was an alternative rock band from the 90s with lead singer Shirley Manson and famous producer Butch Vig on drums. This song was from the most recent 2012 album, Not Your Kind of People, their first album in seven years. This song is about unhealthy relationships that make us hate the idea of love. Butch Vig even said that they were surprised no other artist has written a song with that title. My next song is for all you guys and girls out there who are fed up with your man and ready to move on. You think you're a man by Divine. Divine is one of the most famous drag queens in history, known for doing John Waters movies such as Hairspray and Pink Flamingos, and for his dance songs in the 1980s. The song You Think You're a Man is all about a woman who knows she is too good for her man. Remember girls and guys, if your man is not good enough for her, for you, tell him he is not man enough for you and leave him because you deserve only the best. That's all for this episode of Previews and Reviews. Have a great Valentine's Day, whether you will be with your true love or by yourself. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the Duquesne students who gave us their previews and reviews. And we'll see you next time.